Everyone's been talking about GLP-1s, Ozempic, semaglutide, trizepatide. Well, the third generation only gets better and it smokes the other ones. And we're gonna be talking about retitrutide. What it is, does it actually work, and is it worth the hype behind it? It's not FDA legal yet. So what are the dosings that they're going to be coming out with from a medical standpoint, realistically? And do we even need to go that high so you can maybe save some money? How it works and why it's so much better than the other ones, which I think is the more important thing in this video. So retitrutide, what is it? Now, most commonly, you're going to see it labeled as a GLP-3 online. Why is it labeled that way? Now, retitrutide is a triple agonist. So you have a GLP-1 agonist in there, which is traditionally a semaglutide or a then you have the second generation, which added GIP into it, or they're calling it nowadays a glucose independent peptide. And then you also have glucagon agonist added into the mix. Now, what is a GLP-1 first and foremost? So GLP-1 is really going to help us with insulin secretion. On top of that, it's also going to reduce down our appetite directly in our brain, but it also reduces down, which is the major issue with it, our gastric emptying. Now, this is good and bad. If so you're someone that's overeating, like in you know, the obese populace, reducing down that appetite two times over might not be that bad of a thing. The issue that we ran into is people are running it in such high dosages that they were not able to eat food. What does this lead to? It leads to thyroid downregulation, which leads to mainstream news and the side effects that they are warning about right now. Now, what is one of the solutions? Well, reducing down the dose or come up with one that is more well tolerated. And that led us to the second generation, which was trizepatide. Trizepatide added in another agonist in the mix called GIP, which they're labeling now as a glucose independent peptide. Now this is actually a metabolic agent, which most people don't talk about. So it can help lipase to release so getting fat out of the cell, so then you can oxidize that fat, which leads to extra fat burning. And that's what's nice about it. But the more important thing is that it cut down the GLP dose by 50%. On top of this, it increased how quickly you could actually move the food through your gastrointestinal system. Oh, hey guys, I didn't see you guys there. If you guys are finding this helpful, I love to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. We have a lot of peptide videos coming up and this is gonna help you guys accomplish all your goals and more. So that's what this is about, is helping people get better. So trizepatide versus the first generation was four times more well tolerated at higher dosages. Now this is where things get a little crazy. So the first generation would be scripted up to 2.4 milligrams, second generation up to 11 milligrams because it was so much more well tolerated. Not only did they lose more weight on the second generation, but they also retained more weight loss than the first generation, where 85 to 90% of the weight loss would actually come back after stopping the semaglutide or ozempic. Now I personally find that way lower dosages are needed in a healthy populace. In fact, what I find is usually these populaces that are taking super high dosages end up having a lot of issues long-term because of the downregulation of the thyroid hormone because they're eating less food. Now you can eat less food, that's not the issue. It's eating very low amounts of food for extremely long periods of time that causes some issues. It also makes it so if you come off, the rebound is pretty rough. Now, I wanna talk about retitrutide. We've talked enough about the other ones. This is what you guys are here for. Now with retitrutide, I was not expecting quite the results that I was because between the first generation and the second Second generation. I personally didn't really see that much of a drastic difference in a healthy populace of fit people that want to get more fit. However, retitrutide threw me for a curveball because of how much more effective it was. So let's talk about why this happened and what my theory was behind it before I even started. So with retitrutide, you have a triple agonist. So you have the first two, so trizepatide, you have the GLP-1 agonist, you have the GIP agonist, and then you have glucagon agonist which GIP actually does help to agonize the glucagon receptor. However, you have a direct glucagon agonist in there now, which can help with preservation and helping with the insulin release. And that's kind of nice because you'd never want to go into low blood sugar ranges, so it helps to regulate that metabolic factor. So the big reason why I liked it is the theory behind potential muscle preservation. And in fact, this was true. Not only do you have three different agonists, so the GLP is way lower, so you have less gastrointestinal motility slowing down, but on top of it, you have the GIP, so you have some of that fatty oxidation going on, and then you have glucagon to potentially help with the muscle preservation, as well as the homeostasis point with your actual blood sugar levels. So we're trying to get as much skeletal muscle glycogen to make our muscle tissue bigger, and we don't want the muscle wasting that other people are experiencing on the other two. Now, this is what I found. If I did a one-to-one -one dose transfer for from trizepatide to retitrutide, 
I immediately started seeing positive benefactors. And I'm talking dosages so low that they're medically not even scripted as low as I was using them. And the dose that I started off was one milligram. And immediately I started seeing a difference there. The max dose that I have actually seen needed for getting benefits as well as appetite reduction is two to 2.5 milligrams. Now remember, there's less GLP in it, so it doesn't reduce on the appetite quite as much as trizepatide or GLPs normally do. And the dose, by the way, is not daily, it is weekly. So extremely low dosages, because trizepatide dose usually starts off at 2.5 milligrams per week, up to 11 milligrams per week. And then GLP-1s, traditionally, they start off at 0.5 milligrams. The lowest dose I've seen scripted is 2.5 milligrams. Lower dosages than this is effective with those as well. But reditrutide immediately at one milligram became effective from going from trizepatide or traditional GLP-1 all the way up. And in theory, that's a lower GLP dose. However, the results spoke for themselves. As soon as this was coming into play, weight loss started. Muscle preservation started. The muscle tissue started filling out. Fat started reducing down. Blood glucose started coming down. And these are people that were running high dosages of GLP-1s. And immediately, blood glucose actually started coming down further into perfect ranges. And I consider perfect ranges in the 80s. So what are the risks and the side effects compared to the others? Well, because there's less GLP, there's less risk of major things like fecal impact. A lot of people don't talk about fecal impact being an issue. However, a lot of people have been hospitalized for the first generations due to the fact that their motility slowed down so much that they were throwing up and ended up in the hospital, or B, their gastrointestinal system slowed down so much that they end up getting fecal impact. Now that could have been secondhand from potentially thyroid downregulating and motility slowing down. However, with reditrutide in low dosages, I have seen none of those side effects. I have seen a reduction in appetite and a reduction in motility, but not to the same level and degree as the other ones, with way better results in way lower dosages. The other thing in practice I've seen it way more effective than just doing a one dose per week is to split up that dose two times per week. Some people even microdose this daily rather than doing two shots per week or one shot per week and they see way better results. In fact, I was one of those people. I had a theory because my blood sugar actually kept crashing from Graves' disease. If I add reditrutide, what will happen to me? Will it stabilize my blood sugar? The answer was yes, actually. And that had to do with the glucagon in it. I wasn't taking it for the GLP, I was literally taking it for the glucagon. So for my dose personally, what I found the sweet spot was 0.5 milligrams two times per week. So a total of one milligrams per week. Now the downsides with Reditrutide is it is non-FDA approved. Eli Lilly does own the patent for it right now and they're in the process of getting it approved. But this is how Big Pharma works, you guys. They have two different GLPs already. They wanna sell as much of this as they can before their patents end. Once their patents end, other companies are up for the grabs and they can compound it. So once those patents are getting close to the shelf life, what they'll do is they'll release Reditrutide. So I was expecting it to release at the end of this year, maybe next year. Next year might be in the mix. This year is definitely not going to get approved. We just hit 20,000 subs on YouTube. I wanna thank each and every one of you. 96% of the people that actually watch the channel are not subbed. So if you are subbed, here's something for you guys I wanna give back. We are doing a $100 Morphogen Nutrition giveaway. I've been using this company's products for literally a decade now with myself and my clients because they were always the best bang for buck in the industry. On top of that, I did recently help with the reformulations and they are the best that they have ever been. The requirement for the giveaway is going to be your sub to the channel and then just simply comment Morphogen down below. It only took us 600 videos to make it to 20,000 subs. So thank you guys so much for the continued support. This channel and everything that I do is about making lives better. So thank you guys so much for allowing this to be possible. And I wanna give back to you guys. And this is not the last time. There's also a way to enter two more times. If you're following me on TikTok or Instagram, just make sure to tag someone there and you'll get re-entered. I'm gonna be announcing the winner on the video dropped on December 18th. So make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on so you don't miss that giveaway. We'll see you guys for the announcement. So this is how I personally implement Reditrutide. I would start off with one milligram per week. Whether you want to split that up into 0.5 milligrams two times per week or not, that's up to the person, obviously. Most people tolerate one milligram per week in one shot perfectly fine. Now, as dosing increases though, appetite definitely reduces down and gastromotility to a small extent. So I would do the one milligram one time per week or 0.5.5. .5. Then two weeks later, if it's well tolerated, 
I would increase the dose by 0.5 milligrams. And 0.5 milligrams tends to be that sweet spot where I find you get more benefits, less downsides, and the body adjusts and acclimates pretty quickly. I find that two milligrams up to 2.5 milligrams is plenty for the effects. If someone is extremely ravenous as a person, up to four milligrams. So I find that between two to four weeks, titration dosages go up 0.5 milligrams is very effective. In medical practice, it's gonna be slightly different though. This is probably gonna be implemented at 2.5 milligrams at a starting dose, and they will probably increase two to 2.5 milligrams every four to six weeks. Quite different dosing because you're ending at five milligrams after four to six weeks, and you're also starting at 2.5 milligrams, which you're immediately going to see a reduction in appetite, and that will start to downregulate your thyroid if your appetite gets reduced down too much. That's the issue with all GLPs. If you're trying to train for athletic performance, try to control your diet to the best of your ability. If you're having issues staying with your diet, well, I personally would bump up my dose to make sure that I curb it as I'm reducing down the food. Remember, you don't want to reduce down your appetite too much, but taking an edge off is kind of nice. On top of that, I find that skeletal muscle glycogen stays relatively more full, but the sweet spot and the caveat is if you're taking too high of a dose and the motility reduces down too much, I tend to see waistlines starting to slowly get whiter. And that has to do with the fact that they're holding more bowels in their intestines. If you guys think that reddish true diet is cool, wait until you see the next video.